Hello. Welcome. This is an impromptu session on shopping anxiety. And so I'm just going to jump right in here. I, I did not plan to do this session. Um, it came up last minute and it's something that I've been struggling, struggling with in my personal life. And I just decided, you know what, I'm going to work on that um, because I've kind of tried to do little things here and there as it happens. And when you're in the middle of the grocery store and all of this stress is around you, um, it's a really hard place for me to concentrate and work on myself. And then by the time I get home, I'm usually have a ton of other things to do. And so I just, it's something that I've thought about doing for myself for a really long time. And we're just going to do it today. <laughs> so um, when I really started noticing a big problem with this was around 2020 when everything started happening, if you know what I mean. And I just, um, I don't consider myself, I don't, I don't claim to be an empath because I feel like I have gotten really good at having good boundaries, but there's something about the grocery store, man, when I get in there, it just is like all bets are off and I lose my mind. And I think part of it is because there's so much going on for me. Um, I'm neurodivergent and the distraction of so many things in one place and so many items and noise and the energy that people have. I'm talking about grocery store shopping, right? So we're talking about like your regular to-do errands, not retail therapy, um, which I don't really like that either. So <laughs> I just, uh, I've not ever been any kind of shopping fan. I don't um, feel like it is a therapeutic experience, any kind of shopping for me, but we're going to work on that today. So um, back in 2020, what started happening is uh, I'm an American citizen and I've never at a time in my life remembered experiencing going to the store and not having a plethora of items available. I don't remember any time where something that was a staple in my life was for some reason unavailable. You just go to the store and you expect it to be there, right? And many of us experienced for the first time in our lives um, if you are a little bit more seasoned in this life, you might remember standing in line or parking in line for fuel in the 70s. Um, I've heard some of my older friends talk about that, but I was not even a thought at that point. So for me, I'm 32 years old as of a few days ago. And so 2020 was the first time in my life that I remembered experiencing that feeling of going to the store and not knowing what you would find on the shelves. And so what I've been thinking about recently is um, that's kind of something that we're just getting used to is going in and just expecting that things that are on our list might not be in the store, right? But it's still, um, for me, and I, you might feel the same, it just is an unsettling kind of feeling. Um, it's something that maybe we're used to it or we're expecting it, but um, we haven't come to accept it. And that's where I am. I feel like this is America. <laughs> Why are there empty shelves? This just is, it feels unreal. I feel like I am in a dystopian novel, like things that I read growing up as a child. And I never, ever, ever imagined that we would experience that in the United States of America. But here we are. And it made me think of, there's uh, this study that was done. I wanted to know why this was such a problem for me, feeling like so disturbed when I walked into the store and noticed that things weren't on the shelves. So before we get into the energy work, um, I want to talk about why our bodies are doing what they're doing. And um, talk about my own experience too. So uh, this study, his name is Robert Sapolsky is his last name. I think that's how you say it. And he did this study with monkeys where he would connect them to a brain monitor and he would have them hit a button and they would do it 10 times and they knew that on the 10th time they would receive a reward. So some kind of treat. 
and he noticed that it was during the hitting of the button that their dopamine would spike and then it was actually coming down when they got the reward and so it's this anticipation that's where we actually feel that spike of dopamine going on right and so when we're comparing that to our grocery shopping trip it's all of the distractions around us at the store that's where i experience it is once i'm through the cash register and walking outside i can feel it starting to come down most of the time but while i'm in the store I, there's been uh i think it was three or four months ago i was with my husband we didn't have our kids with us and i had i have not had a panic attack since i think 2019 um but i had one a few months ago in the store because it just oh no that's not true i i do remember having one in 2020 uh, I had gone shopping with my kids. We somehow made it out to the car. And I remember calling my husband and just breaking down on the phone in the parking lot. And he had to come and intervene <laughs> to get us home safely. But um, I don't have panic attacks very often anymore. I used to have them all the time. But it feels like the time when I do feel anxiety is related to my grocery shopping experiences. And so what happened with this um, Sapolsky monkey dopamine uh um project that he was working on and um he would start introducing the treat at different intervals and so they would um they got used to hitting the button 10 times and knowing that they would get a treat and after a while the dopamine kind of started leveling off because they knew they were expecting when it was going to happen and so then they started hitting the button and he started giving them treats at um 25 of the button hits and so it was a surprise like oh something's changed here and then he started doing it when they would hit it 50 percent of the time so they would expect the treat at 25 percent of the time and then he would surprise them and they had to hit the button a few more times and so it just because of that experience, he was able to show um, that this, this anticipation of surprise really spikes those hormones in our bodies. And so going into the store and not knowing what is going to be on the shelves, um, lately the price is changing. Uh, I don't feel like my family has, I mean, we've changed what we're eating a little bit because of the prices. But I don't feel like we've been really majorly impacted by the, um, the the changing prices in the grocery store, which I'm so grateful for because I know that um, it is really hard for American families to put food on the table right now because of these volatile prices that we're finding at the grocery store. But um, I, I do notice that even though we haven't necessarily been impacted to the point that we are having to put things down and not put them in our cart and purchase them. Uh, I know what spurred me wanting to do this is we went grocery shopping yesterday and I started feeling panic in the store. And what has been happening to me is I start experiencing vertigo and I feel like my spirit is leaving my body. I just, um, I, it's, it is just, not a fun experience and so my husband was luckily there with me yesterday but my kids were also with me which i think was adding to the stress and there was some things that were on my list that weren't available in the store and so i had to improvise what our meal plan was and think ahead what was going to be happening in the week ahead and think okay we were going to have grapes here so now i'm going to have to sub and i get, get a different fruit and um it just <laughs> it's a lot for your brain to be thinking all at once right and i'm all about like being present in the moment as much as we can and so for me i it was like i could see in real time the effects of this study on these monkeys how that unpredictability is spiking those hormones and i could feel what it was doing to my body and i have gotten to the point where i'm very very skilled at regulating my uh, hormones over time. And so when it starts changing even a little bit, I'm very aware of it. And my body reacts very strongly to it because it's something that is so out of the ordinary for me. Um, it just, and so 
I said, okay, that's it. I've got to sit down and really look at this. And I thought, you know what, if I'm going to be doing it for myself, why not tap into the collective and help others out with this? Because I'm sure that I'm not the only one who's struggling with it. So with that all being said, <laughs> thanks for listening to that introduction. We are going to jump right in here. And I had a few things come up about what we need to do. So um, I wrote them down with crayon because this is very last minute. I'm not going to have any slides or anything for this session. And so if you want to just put it on in the background while you are folding laundry or something, you don't have to watch my face um, because that's all you're going to be seeing. <laughs> but thanks for coming. And I hope this helps you. Um, you can probably figure out that you can apply this to more than grocery shopping. If there are other places that you experience anxiety, um, like maybe, I don't know, family gatherings. That's another one that a lot of people experience. But let's get into this. So um, the first thing that I thought was to prepare ourselves as much as we can before we go into the grocery shopping experience. And so I just wanted to give a few tips that have helped me. And um, yeah, that's We'll just jump right into those. So we're going to do everything that we can before we go into the store to pay attention to the task at hand. And so that means meal pre meal planning. So you have a list of what you need. That means checking your pantry and um, people call it shopping from your pantry where you go in and you see what you have before you go to the grocery store so that you aren't thinking about what you should be I, I know if I don't have a list, I'm mentally imagining what my pantry looks right now and trying to fill in the holes of things that I have used. And it just, it takes you out of the moment and it leaves you to be caught off guard. And so I recommend meal planning because it, and you don't have to stick to like, we're going to have lasagna this day. We're going to have meatloaf this day. Just I recommend however often you want to go shopping, making a list of meals that you're going to eat in between those days so that you know exactly what you need to purchase and go off of your list instead of just being bombarded by everything on the shelves in the store. So we're going to lay a foundation of success before we even put our foot into the store. Meal plan, write lists, calculate. I will bring my phone and I will calculate out the price as I go so that when I get to the cash register, it's not a surprise to me how much my groceries are going to cost. And especially that helps us with the volatility of grocery prices right now, right? Um, I used to pay the same amount for foods to the point where I knew before I left the house almost to the cent what I was going to be spending on groceries because it was just predictable. And it's absolutely, I can't even tell you. I'm like, is this going to be $100? Is this going to be $300? Because things that we normally buy are changing so rapidly. I have no idea how to even plan or prepare for it. And it can kind of give you an idea as you go if you do need to make a change or an adjustment. Um, eggs, man, this is... February 8th of 2023. And at the moment, the price of eggs have completely blown apart any semblance of a budget that we can make for our food at, at this time, right? So, but bringing a calculator and using it for every item that you pull off of the shelf before you put it into your cart, type in the amount that is due and add it up as you go along. And so that when you go to check your groceries out, it's that anticipation that we're trying to beat, right? And so you're not, I know I've felt, it's almost like a drug. And that I think is why people get addicted to shopping is because they start feeling that jittery, like, oh my gosh, how much is this going to cost as they are sitting in the checkout line bringing everything up? And it's just not a surprise anymore. And you can make the decision before you get to that point of no return whether or not you want to put stuff back on the shelf if it seems to be building up faster than you anticipated. So we're just getting on top of these emotions and um, leaving as little room for surprise as we can. Uh, if you can think of any other ideas on how to um, prevent this surprise, I would love to hear them. You can email me and I'll drop my email 
in the in the the lesson text of this session. So, okay, we're moving on to the energy work now. So, what I saw was we need to create a boundary, and I saw two things. So, the first thing that we're going to do is technically, I guess I saw three things. We're going to do two energetic boundaries, and um, we're going to do some breath work. So, what I do is. Um, we are going to walk through a breathing exercise right now that I recommend that you do in the car before you step into the store. There's two things that I want to do. The first is we're going to get rid of any jitteriness and just come into ourselves. And so we're going to, um, have you ever cried so hard that when you're done, your body is going <laughs> and it's just out of your control? <laughs> There's a reason that happens because it resets your body. And so we're going to do that. We're going to breathe as much as you can in one breath. And then I know it's going to feel like there's no more space, but I promise you there is more space. We're going to expand our belly area and breathe from our diaphragm. So you're going to breathe in one big breath as much as you can, stop for two to three seconds, and then pull as much more air in as you possibly can. Hold it for four to six seconds and then slowly blow it out. So you go. Okay. You might notice if you are trained in breathing techniques that you could blow it out a lot longer. And if you can, do it. Keep going until you can breathe all of that out. So I recommend doing that two to three times. Just a big breath in. One more small breath as much as you can get in. Filling in from the diaphragm area, holding it, and breathing. So you're breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. Okay. The next breathing exercise that we're going to do is just a big deep breath. So as you breathe in, I recommend counting for four to six seconds, and then you hold for four to six seconds, and then you release for six to eight seconds. So one big breath in. Out. Okay, as you do these breathing exercises, so you can be doing this in the car, sitting in front of your steering wheel, and just imagine tension releasing from your body. So I want you to keep practicing these breathing exercises as I speak through this. So as you breathe, pick whichever one felt better to you and go through it again. And as you breathe in, become aware of the tension that is in your body, anywhere that you might feel it. It might be um, in your head. A lot of times it's in our jaws, our neck, and our shoulders. And as you keep breathing, become aware of this tension. And as you breathe out, just imagine that as the air comes out of your body, from your top of your head, just relax. So let your, don't um, hold your eyebrows up high, just let them relax and fall down. You'll feel a physical change happening. Feel your jaw, your ears, your neck into your shoulders. Let them drop down away from your ears, your back, your torso, your arms, all the way down to your fingertips, your hips, your thighs. Feel your knees relax and into your calves, all the way into your ankles, to your feet, and all of your toes. And just keep breathing. Do those breathing exercises. And with every exhale, releasing all tension from our bodies. Good job. Okay. Um, so those are the breathing exercises that I wanted to go through. And um, now we're going to work on boundaries. I'm already releasing some stuff. If you're yawning, that's okay. Okay, 
boundaries. I see two boundaries. The first is a friend, she introduced me to this concept of, imagine if you can, a lace doily. But this doily isn't actually made of lace, it's made of light. So we're going to imagine it coming over our head and laying down around us to the ground. So it's a really big doily, right? And it just, I imagine it like my girls have what they call twirly dresses and they just, they hang, it's like a circle skirt. And so when you move about, it just opens up wide and it just stays around you. And it just imagine that this this light doily light meaning like a light bulb like shining light so it's made so you can imagine it's glowing this beautiful white light it might be a bluish white light it might even be pink white if you can imagine um just a really white bright light color mixed with another color that's okay um whatever color yours needs to be Trust that that is right for you. Um, I'm tapping my chest right now just to get some things released that I am feeling come up. It's okay to do boundaries um, in our life. This is not, um, if you want to tap this with me and say it, it could be safe for me to create boundaries in my life. It could be safe for me to observe boundaries in my life. It could be safe and beneficial to others if I created good, strong boundaries in my life. Take a deep breath. So you tap, you just um, tap on your collarbones, under your collarbones, or you can tap on your forehead or your chin and it just creates a rhythm for your body to accept that because a lot of times when we do affirmations, our mind actually is searching for the reasons why the opposite of what we're saying is true. And so we are, the body's like, wait, what is happening? Um, something has changed. And so it allows those words to go to our subconscious mind without our conscious mind fighting it. So. Okay, um, so we're working on this lace doily, light doily. Um, imagine that all of the spaces, whatever your pattern on your doily looks like of light, those allow light from God, heaven, or the universe, or the divine creator, whatever you want to call. I believe that it's God, but I think that he is not a respecter of persons, so whatever you believe. I'm going to be yawning a lot through this, you guys, because this is this session is for me, so I'm releasing a lot of my own stuff. Okay, so we are imagining that light can come through and penetrate us through those holes in the pattern, whether it's light from other people, the light of Christ, divine light, whatever you want to call it. That's what those holes are there for, so that we still can experience empathy and compassion and um, connection in our relationships, right? We don't want to completely put this wall up that blocked us from having experiences with other people, but we do want to protect ourselves. Okay, so, okay, really is set. Um, you can, as you do your breathing exercises in the car before you go into the store, think about this doily and just ask yourself, ask your energy system to put that doily in the way that it went in during this session. The other thing that I imagine, and I was doing this for years and years, um, and then I started learning that a lot of other people do this, and I didn't realize at the time that I started doing this how popular it actually is, but that is to imagine light a tube of light around you and it's just okay so you can put it out as far as you need it to go we are going into the grocery store so we're probably going to be 
popping up or bumping into people um, depending on how crowded your grocery store is. So I wouldn't put it too far out, but imagine that it's like, I don't know, five, three to five feet around you. Um, if you need to go out further, trust your intuition that the answer that you're coming up with is right for you. So we imagined this beam of light <laughs> coming down from heaven. And it just, um, I've even heard people talk about it like, the way that I see it is if you've ever um, seen kids put bubble solution into like a kiddie pool and then take like a hula hoop or something. And it, so you can imagine it as a bubble if you need to, but just this reflective, beautiful light surface and it just it goes around you. I actually see it as a beam, so it's filled with light. And it just comes down around us and it goes all the way through the ground around us. So nothing can penetrate. Um, when we are around other people, they are not, we're not connecting to energy vampires as we're walking through the grocery store. Um, we're not feeding off of the emotions of the people who work there and hate their job. Thank you for your patience as I yawn through this whole session. Um, we are just experiencing ourselves and the task at hand and not being bombarded with the emotions and energy of others. Take a deep breath and let that in. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. I'm getting... But there's something else that I need to do for that at this time. Um, not accepting that boundaries are safe for some reason. Okay. Uh, Premortal contracts is what I am seeing. I'm seeing these contracts that people have signed. So if this resonates for you, um, imagine that there's this contract that says, I will not create boundaries. And it's got your signature at the bottom. Imagine taking that piece of paper and tearing it into shreds and just blow it away. And if you feel like you resonated with that, I want you to literally like imagine shreds of paper, what that might look like and feel like in your hand and literally blow it away. And it just poofs. I see it into like gold stardust and it this spreads out this beautiful cheer through the land. Okay, that's what we needed to do. I have to yawn again. I apologize. Okay. Next thing that came up for me now that we've got this boundary in. So you can do those boundary exercises when you are sitting in your car doing the breathing exercises. And then we are going to next work on meridians. So meridians are these lines in your body um they really actually correspond to the human nervous system there's 12 major ones and then there's two one runs up and down the center of the body in the front another one from the base of the skull to the base of the spine in the back thank you for your patience as i yawn through this but what happens with meridians is when we experience stress or a fluctuation of hormones or emotion, it can cause stagnation or clog in those lines. And it's chi energy is what it is called, which is um, related to our blood in our body. and um that is this chi energy is what runs through those lines and it just if it's clogged um i think this is why i get vertigo when i am experiencing this anxiety in the store because you carry oxygen through your blood right and so if your chi energy isn't moving it's like your chi is what i would um 
for every physical thing in your body, there's a spiritual component, right? And so I would um, correspond chi to blood. So chi is the energy or the spiritual component and blood is the physical thing, right? And they, they're they not really separate. They are, but there aren't. Like anything that affects your energy body is going to be affecting your physical body. That's why when we have this these imaginary things going on, there's a physical somatic response happening, right? Psychosomatic response. So it's almost like if blood isn't getting to the brain, what are you going to be experiencing? Dizziness, fatigue, fainting. That's what happens to me. And so it, I just, it's mind boggling to me how I'm like, it always works. It just, I don't know why I, I still get surprised about energy when I learn about it, but um, it's real. <laughs> so working on these meridians, what I saw was to clear the meridians. And I actually, I have a friend who, um, she discovered that there are financial meridians and I, there are two. There's one that is incoming and one that is outgoing. And so we're going to count backwards from 16. So what I want you to do is imagine that as you are counting, so starting at 16, um, wherever your brain goes or whatever it sees is okay. This does not have to be perfect. Um, there's no right or wrong way to do this. But we're going to imagine lines going through our body and you can imagine it like um what the electrical system of the body might look like like um the nervous system and so just imagine 16 of these right and so for some people it might look like parallel lines up and down like there's 16 of them um for others it might you might actually feel your mind to be drawn to specific areas in the body that's okay wherever your mind goes and whatever you see just trust that it is correct <laughs> okay so we're going to start at 16 so see the 16th line and imagine that as we say 16 what we're going to do with each number as we count down is we are going to imagine um Okay, sorry. We're imagining a pipe cleaner. So if you've ever seen those, you can buy them at the dollar store. They're those bendy little things that kids like to play with. And they're fuzzy on the outside. And you can just, um, they're used, they're supposed to be used to clean pipes. So we're going to imagine a pipe cleaner being poked into the line that you're imagining. And as it goes through and comes out the other side, light flows in the direction that it needs to flow. And whatever you see is correct behind the pipe cleaner. So as it comes out the end, the light is flowing as it needs to flow. And if there are any blocks, it's going to push the blocks out with it. And when they come out of the end of the line, they can go off to the evidence room in the sky, which is some place that we just send things that we don't need to have in our life anymore for them to be taken care of by the creator. Okay, so we're going to imagine that every time we count from 16 to 1. So we're just a, a recap. Cleaner goes through the pipe. Whatever the pipe looks like for you is okay. As it goes through, light starts coming behind it until it's all gone and all of the gunk that was caught and the pipe cleaner itself goes off to the evidence room in the sky. Take a deep breath. Sixteen. Fifteen. Fourteen. Thirteen. Keep breathing as I do this. Twelve. Eleven. 10, 
Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three, two, one. Take a really big deep breath. Yawn if you need to yawn. Just breathe out everything that is left over from what we just did. And all of your pipes should be clear and clean now. Yay! I'm giving you a thumbs up. Everything went through the way that it needed to go through. So. We're just letting all of that go. Okay. Keep breathing. You're doing good. We're almost through. Okay. When I first got down to do this, I asked how many images we were going to work through, and I got six. But I'm wondering if we already worked through them, so I'm going to check again how many images. Four. Okay. So we already did two images. The, the doilies, the boundary, that was one, and the clearing meridians. Okay, so we have four images left, and I, I'm assuming that these are going to be related to scenarios that you will find at the store. So, okay, first image is coming through for me. Um, remember that our body processes chemically and so breathing and drinking water as we do this work is going to ensure that it clears from our body it comes out through our breath and through our kidneys so as you're doing this work drinking lots of water will help um not overwork the kidneys and filter all of us out of your body stay hydrated okay Okay, <laughs> image number one, if you've ever watched Blue Collar Comedy Tour, it's Jeff Foxworthy, and he's kind of a redneck type of uh, fellow. He does redneck comedy, but on the Blue Collar Comedy Tour, he is talking about going to the grocery store with your kid and walking down the cereal aisle. So... Um, what I am seeing is a full-grown man acting like a child in the middle of the cereal aisle. And um, he's kicking and screaming on, I can't remember what the name of the cereal is, Frosted Fruity Pebbles or something like that is. So imagine this full-grown man child in the middle of the cereal aisle screaming about wanting the Frosted Fruity Pebbles and never being able to pick the cereal that he wants. Okay, sorry for my yawns. I'm releasing so much. <laughs> and um, he's just screaming and kicking and turning in a circle in the middle of the cereal aisle. And then he says, he he picture. okay, what Jeff Hawk really does um, is he talks about how a parent might react to this situation and he's pretending to hold a shopping cart. Now you're picturing the parent looking down at the child on the floor, the man child, and they say, where are your parents? And they nonchalantly walk down the aisle as if to say, this is not my kid so that everyone around them isn't judging them. <sighs> Take a deep breath. Okay. Now what we're doing is um, we're picturing the parent at the end of the aisle that does not have their child with them, watching this whole scene unfold before them. And just see how they're looking on with a feeling of compassion and no judgment. And they say, we've all been there. Take a deep breath. Uh, we're going to tap that in. 
So tap on right underneath your collarbones or your jaw, right under your ears where your jaw meets your skull or your temples, just above your temples near your eyebrows, wherever it feels comfortable for you to tap. It doesn't matter. Just tap somewhere. Tap and say, we've all been there before. Take a deep breath and say that three times. We've all been there before. We've all been there before. Ooh, let it go. I'm getting that there's nothing else that needs to be done for that image. What? Okay. So that was number one. We've got three more images to work through. And I, like I said, I didn't plan this. Um, so let's hold on as I work through. <sighs> okay, I see um, a kid who they have their allowance and it's the first time that they've ever been able to take money and go to the store. And so see them approaching with this wonder and amusement and they're so excited and they can't imagine what they're going to spend their money on. And they get in and they're just staring at all of the items on the shelves. And it's this, pardon me, I see paralysis setting in. Like they're just frozen. And they just can't even take in everything that's there because the shelves are just full and there's so many colors and there's lots of noise going on. And how could they ever choose? <sighs> See them crying and their mom is sitting there tapping her foot and tapping her, her watch on her wrist. And she's like, hurry up, come on, make a choice already. And they're just like... I can't choose. There's too much. There's too many options. How could I ever choose? And the mom finally gets so upset that she's like, we're going to do this another day. And she grabs the child's hand and they leave the store and just feel all of the emotions. There's the anger of the mother, frustration, annoyance. I've got other things to do. Um, there's the betrayal and hurt and... Um, sadness and frustration of the child. Why couldn't I just figure it out? Why couldn't I just pick something? They're just so upset. There's tears and crying. They cry all the way home and they get sent to bed when they get home and they just cry to their pillow. And the next morning I see the sun come up and the light comes through and shines on the child and it's a it's a new day. Take a deep breath. With a new opportunity to do this a better way. So see the child come out and the mother is making breakfast. And see that the mother has had time to think about this whole situation and everything that went down. And she says, maybe there was a better way that we could have handled this situation. And so she sits down with the child and they talk about over breakfast what the child loves. What type of activities or things do does this child love to do? And see them. Take a deep breath. Have this conversation and all of the hurt feelings that were had yesterday and the annoyance and everything. As they sit and talk together and they giggle and they laugh and they're getting to know each other a little better. That all of those feelings just kind of float up to the ceiling and pop like little bubbles and when they pop they're just taken to the evidence room in the sky so those emotions are not being experienced anymore and they've been released and see them make a plan that whatever it is the child is interested in so you might have a child that's interested in toys or art or um i don't know science kits or books or clothes or food, whatever your child is interested in, they talk about it and they make a plan and they decide what they're going to buy before they go into the store and see the mom take the child back into the store and they walk straight to the item that they need. They pick it up, they take it to the front of the store and they make their purchase and leave and go home and have the best day ever with whatever activity the child has purchased. 
Take a deep breath. Ooh, okay. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. We're doing a good job. I'm giving you a thumbs up. You're doing great. That was image number two. Okay. Two more images. I already saw this image starting to come through. It has to do with a cash register. Okay. I see this really old man um, just like probably planning his funeral. So old. Uh, and he's walking into the store and you know, I, I'm hearing like old mother Hubbard looked in her cupboard to give her doggy a bone. But when she went there, the cupboards were bare. So I'm seeing like he had been at home and he knew that his cupboards were bare and he didn't have anything in his wallet, but he just needs some food to put into his cupboards. So he's He's just got to figure it out. And he walks into the store and he doesn't know what he's going to do. And he's walking around the store and finds a quarter on the ground. And it's just enough for him to buy a slice of cheese. So he takes his slice of cheese and his quarter up to the front of the store. And I see this cash register that is just bulging. Like there's so much coming in to this store. And that little old man, he sees that cash and he's just angry. Why do they have so much? I can't even afford a slice of cheese. And it's just all of the emotions that you can think of towards society, the store, the way things are, um, things that are out of his control. There's never enough for me. Uh, this, they, they are taking more than their fair share of the slice of pie. Whatever comes up for you, let it come up. There's anger, there's rage, there's hatred, there's frustration, there's, um, just, ugh, yucky. <laughs> it's just dark. And he's just feeling it. And he's just like, all of his energy is going towards that cash register that's just about to bust. <sighs> Take a deep breath. <sighs> I see that as a cash register takes his quarter and they go to put it in the cash, or as the cashier takes his quarter, they go to stick it in the cash register. Finally, it's just too much. And that cash register just bursts apart and I see money just start flying everywhere and I see this man like Benjamin Button he starts aging backward and he's just grabbing money and touching money and with every dollar bill that he grabs onto it takes him back in time and he's going back to every situation he's had where he hasn't had enough so he's aging backward and reliving all of those things um, I see him going back to that moment when he left his house and he knew that his cupboards were bare. And then he goes back to um, not being able, oh, this is sad, to afford to pay for his wife's funeral. And um, I just see like just anything that he could scrape to just have the most meager funeral for his wife. Um, I see him aging backwards to not being able to afford Christmas presents for his grandkids and grown adult children. I see them aging backwards to um, not being able to pay a mortgage on their house and losing their house. This is really big. Just all of these events until he reaches the age of a little child when he's standing in the store. And he asks his mom for a piece of penny candy. So I'm talking about like a two or three year old child here is what I'm seeing. So imagine this man that has Benjamin buttoned himself back to a two or three year old child. And he asks his mom for a piece of penny candy. And she 
grand, like it's like a bite like there's just a lot of anger and emotion behind it frustration horror embarrassment shock like why would you ask me that in front of all of these people and she just looks at him and she says we don't have money for those kinds of things Woo. take a deep breath just feel it let it out release it breathe it out all of the emotions of this mother and for the child he just cries he doesn't understand why she would treat him that way. All he wanted was a piece of candy. That's all he wanted was a piece of candy. And see him just... <clears throat> He's accepted that there is never going... There's never... <sighs> there is not enough for everyone in this world. Take a deep breath. <sighs> We're going to do some tapping and we're going to finish up this image. We're going to tap. I don't know how, but I just trust that there is enough for everyone in this world. Take a deep breath. Do that one three times. I don't know how. But I just trust that there is enough for everyone in this world. I don't know how, but I just trust that there is enough for everyone in this world. Breathe it out. Okay. Continue tapping. I'm tapping on my wrist now. It could be safe for me to believe there is enough and to spare. It could be safe for me to believe there is enough and to spare. It could be safe for me to believe there is enough and to spare. Despite what I have experienced in this life, I could believe there is enough for everyone. Despite what I have experienced in this life, I could believe there is enough for everyone. Despite what I have experienced in this life, I could believe there is enough for everyone. I'm getting there's two more things that we need to tap. It could be safe for me to believe what I believe despite the experience of others. It could be safe for me to believe what I believe despite the experience of others. It could be safe for me to believe what I believe despite the experience of others. Read that out. It could be safe for me to begin recognizing changes as I accept these beliefs. It could be safe for me to begin recognizing changes as I accept these beliefs. It could be safe for me to begin recognizing changes as I accept these beliefs. Take a deep breath. Okay, I'm getting that we don't have to do anything else for that image. We just needed to acknowledge those experiences for some reason. I thought we were going to resolve it somehow, but the tapping resolved it. I'm going to take a drink of water really quick. Okay. We have one more image. You can just work on your breath for a moment. Keep releasing things that we've been working on while I get this image. I usually do this behind the scenes so that I don't have to sit and think about and wait for it to come in while we're live. But okay, I see a, like a ball, like a kickball. 
or it could be a balloon, whatever you imagine, something that retains air. And I see a pump, and it's just pump, 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 pump. And I see all of these people standing around it, and it feels completely out of control. And they know that there is nothing that they can do about the pump. It's just going to keep pumping air, and no one can stop it. Everyone knows that eventually the ball is going to pop and they're not going to be able to do anything about it except for experience it as it happens, right? So see everyone bracing themselves for impact. And it's just like, if you are a person that doesn't like the sound of popping balloons, imagine what that would feel like. And I just see like this tension, like they're just, some people are covering their ears, some people are covering their eyes, whatever th your people are doing, <sighs> let them do it, just they're bracing for impact. And the air just keeps pump, 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 pumping. And then pop, it happens and everyone experiences it. And some people are like, oh, they faint. <laughs> <laughs> when the ball pops and they're just laying on the ground and um, other people that were standing clear by close by but they were covering their eyes and not their ears there's a ring in their ears and um, a lot of people jump um, but they look around and the balloon has or the ball has popped and yes it was scary at the moment that it happened but take a deep breath Okay, it didn't kill everyone, or anyone for that matter. <sighs> there are some people who are coming to from their fainting experience, and there's other people waiting for the ringing in their ears to die down. But overall, everyone's looking around at each other, and they're like, oh, <laughs> we survived, and they just... Try slowly. Some people take longer than others. Some people, they were like, I knew this was going to happen. And they just, they're annoyed, but they go on with their business. And it's like, they were so stupid for letting that pump run the way that it was running. And other people are taking some time to come to. They have to, um, the people on the ground, like I said, have to kind of wake up and start learning how to move their bodies and feel like they're coming into their bodies again. Um, the people with the ear ringing are slowly starting to hear things again and they can leave and go about their business and slowly everyone just starts going about their business and it's just this message coming through of, yeah, that was scary, but we all lived through it and we're, we're all okay. Like some of us are taking longer than others. But that's okay. Some of us were affected in, we were all affected in different ways according to our own experience and perception and um, proximity to the ball, right? Some people might have been sh hit with shrapnel. Shrapnel, I don't know if that's the right word. Um, just pieces of the ball flying. And, but it might have broken skin for some, but it's just a wound that needs time to heal. And the body takes care of itself and it heals the way that it needs to heal. And at the end, weeks later, we're looking back, maybe up to a year later, we're looking back and we're all okay. Let's tap that in. Even though that was scary, it all worked out okay. <laughs> tap that in. Even though that was scary, it all worked out okay. Take a deep breath. Even though that was scary, it all worked out okay. Even though that was scary, it all worked out okay. Breathe. Okay. That was all that I needed to do for that image. So, is there anything else that I need to do for this session? No. Yay! You might have to do this a few times. I recommend um, planning it like 
a day or two before your next shopping trip and then try to do it for maybe i'm getting like for most people three hold on just because that wasn't that was a false test three okay three times for most people who are watching this session you're going to start noticing a big difference um after you watch it oh okay i know why that was a false test because it's for, I'm getting for some people, it's like you can watch it once and you're really going to notice a significant difference on your third shopping trip and it'll just keep getting better from there. Yes. And for other people, you need to watch it three times before your next shopping trip. If you can't do it, it's okay. Remember, we're all going to be okay. Go do your shopping. Do what you need to do. You'll survive and just keep watching it and as time goes on your shopping trips are going to get better and better so ah i'm like i don't need to go shopping for a while now but i i'm excited to see what happens on my next shopping trip i'm hoping that i don't experience any vertigo because i'm just over it i'm so over it i'm so done with it ah yay okay I hope that this has been an awesome session for you. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that your shopping trips are a breeze from here on out. I hope that you see the significant change that is happening in your life as you continue on your journey of changing your mindset and your perception of the world around you. And thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for the contribution that you're making in this world and especially to my family. And if you have any fun experiences that you want to share with this session, reach out to me on Facebook or in my email. And I would love to hear about your experiences. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope that your shopping trips become amazing. Have a great day.